took like a 10 minute walk to find four nice cafes. Classic Australia. The cafe culture here is great, although still can't properly taste the coffee, but you know, I can kind of taste that it's a nice coffee. I have just arrived in Adelaide, South Australia, and I've managed to get some air in my tyres, get my bike off, and I'm out riding on like a really nice bike path. I'm really, really excited to start riding here. Just going for a real smooth shake out today, like zone one. So, one, it's a bit colder today. I had to actually use a gilet for the first time. Thank God I packed one. But I am riding over to the start of the course. And I'm just going to ride the beginning of the race and the end of the race. Because I heard there's a technical descent or steep descent at the end. And there's a big climb at the beginning. I just kind of want to see them. Just so I know what I've got myself in for. <laughs> so last night I went to a really cool event. We had, there was like a rooftop bar with food. And yeah, that was like pre-race welcome party, which is cool. And today just spinning out my legs. This course is absolutely gorgeous. The gravel is like champagne gravel, like it's princess gravel. Um, which isn't actually normally my favourite. I quite like it when it's rough and hard, but I think this is going to be quite nice to ride. After checking out the course, I went into town and picked up my welcome pack and kind of checked out central Adelaide as well. So I went for a little bit of a stroll and then headed to the central market, which was really cool. And there were so many food options that I wanted to indulge in. And these grapes really took my fancy. They just looked really funky. And I ended up getting a nice protein shake. It is one day until Rattle Gravel Whirl, actually less than, oh, just over 12 hours. And yeah, I am just kind of relaxing, prepping for tomorrow. I am really, really excited for tomorrow. I am a little bit nervous, to be completely honest, because I've not raced in how long? A couple of months, since October, November, December, January. I've raced in just over three months. This is a really early season race for me, so like, I'm not, at my fittest i'm not expecting to be at my fittest at all and i've just kind of come back from this flu and we're now officially today is exactly one month since i first got the flu and i still sound a bit ill <laughs> i'm not ill so like anyone who's concerned about me racing and riding because i am still ill i'm not still ill i'm just gonna make myself my really simple classic dinner basically make like fajitas just get some chicken for protein, some vegetables, but not tons, and then a lot of rice. And then I'll try and get an early night. I'm just so excited. This event just is so well organized and the atmosphere is amazing. You can already tell from like the, the little bits that they've put on. Here is my fajita with rice for extra carbs. Right. I've got it upside down, don't I? Woohoo! So I'm riding to get my lift, sorry, this is a bit blinding. I didn't realise it was going to be dark because there's daylight savings here. I got scooped up by Matt who's based in Adelaide. This is in the spirit of gravel, Matt. <laughs> and shaved arms. It's race morning, I'm just warming up. Um, feeling nervous but excited. The atmosphere is really cool. <laughs> there's like a slip and slide for after. I'd love for it to be too well back in the morning. Are you excited? We are so excited for you to be here for our inaugural Rattle Gravel. Let's get excited. It's five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Look after one another, 
So the race started up like this, essentially 10 minute climb, which was really, really hard work. And people obviously went full gas from the absolute start. And I found that my legs were just absolutely dying by the end of it. But also I was like really anxious to kind of hold back a bit because I knew that there was over 2,500 meters of climbing to go. And I ended up in this group for a little bit. But the one thing I was finding really hard was there was a lot of climbing, which I actually found okay. But as soon as we were climbing, we were then descending. And I was in this group of men and I swear on every single descent, they would just absolutely drop me. And I was trying to stay in there and I'd run out of gears, but also I just didn't think I had the weight to keep with them. So I found myself on my own in the kind of middle of no man's land essentially because I just couldn't keep on these guys on the descent. Sometimes I'd catch up to them and then I'd just get dropped again. And I think maybe I need to descend with less breaks, but also, I don't know, I just, I, I don't think I, I've got the momentum that these guys have. There's Rhino there who actually is riding in a Giro jersey, which was super cool when I saw him because I've met him before. But yeah, the scenery was just absolutely insane. Like I have to say, this was one of the most beautiful races I think I've ever done. And the gravel was, as you can kind of tell on the whole, like really just like premium princess gravel, nothing particularly rough about it at all. Again here, you can just see I'm being distanced on the descent. And I'm trying so hard to get back, but I just couldn't get any more speed than that. So 40k in, I looked behind me and there was just like essentially a peloton of riders, maybe like 30, 40 maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating there, but a huge group of riders with women amongst it. And I kind of then was just like accepting that I got sucked up by the group, but I kind of sat mainly on the front of that group or towards the front of that group. Here's the group here. But it was actually really nice because people were a bit chatty and there was a guy that I'd met in Venice who I said hi to who was Aussie. I think Rhino is probably one of the fastest descenders I've ever met. Honestly, he just kept leaving me on the descents. But yeah, then we hit this kind of sink, well, I'm going to say double track section, which had some little muddy bits, which was really good fun. I thought it would split up the group, but obviously the group just kind of kept getting back together, regardless of kind of any obstacles that were thrown upon us. So I was just thinking about like race tactic. I wanted to finish at the front of this group in terms of women. I appreciated that. I probably wasn't going to move forward apart from that. It was impossible to leave this group. Like, regardless of where I sat at the front, trying to push a bit of pace, people weren't really dropping off. And here we have him going into the distance again. Honestly, I just couldn't keep up on the descents. It was it was really my downfall in this race. I don't think I've got any climbing in me. <laughs> And then, yeah, I was thinking about the end of the race and how there was kind of like a kicker climb before a single track section. And I also didn't want to go into the single track with this big group, to be completely honest. We also then hit this sand section coming up, which I was not expecting because somehow I'd accidentally missed it in the recce. And I thought that would kind of split everyone up. But again, no, nope, did not split everyone up.
was a pretty steep descent there and after that I kind of had to work pretty hard to get back on because I'd been gapped on the descent and this here coming up is the kicker climb so this woman attacked and I was like that's exactly when I wanted to attack so I followed her and then went into the single track. Coming right, sorry. <laughs> there was behavior that you would not see in Europe and I actually said that to her afterwards I was like thank you so much moving out of the way because in other racing I have had people literally stick their elbows out and not let me through it was actually really kind that she let me pass so I really wanted to kind of one get a good shot of the single track because it was gorgeous but two kind of run it at my own speed so I really wanted to get past people and get out of it towards the front essentially but I knew I was now in front of all the women in that group and just wanted to hold that position Fresh off the race, I did manage to have a quick go on the slip and slide, which was really good fun. I got hold of an ice cream, of course, and then me and my two favourite supporters, Lisa and Katie, headed to a vineyard for some lunch. And they came to support me racing, which was lovely. Classy, classy, classy. Bike shorts. Oh, this is such a nice view. And I somehow had the energy after the race to finish the day making some fresh homemade pasta for me and Lisa. So it's the morning after race day and I'm just going for a lovely little stroll down the beach. Um, this is Brighton Beach in Adelaide and it's, cool. like, it's honestly gorgeous and there's so many nice cafes. Um, and everyone's on their little morning morning walks, morning runs, morning cycles because we're in Australia and everyone's active and it's amazing. It's like 7am, I just couldn't really sleep beyond 7. Yeah, I thought, get myself a nice coffee and then I'm going to join the hill climb, the fun hill climb today. Nice coffee sourced. Lots of options. Lots of good coffee places in Adelaide. Well, in Brighton, Adelaide especially. People, um... So I rode on over to the Rattle Gravel Hill Climb and I spotted this adorable koala on the way, which was so exciting. But unfortunately I didn't pack any fancy dress with me because I really didn't have the space on my adventuring, but I wish I had a koala outfit like that. That was incredible. So someone attacked and these guys went off and I just went with them and then kind of held my positioning in here and just sort of survived to the end um, to win the backpack, which was great. We then all rode together to watch the Tour Down Under stage, which was finishing at the top of the climb. Then I finished the day with a trip to the beach and some very exciting fish and chips. Have you got it? <laughs> what an end to my trip down under. What is this? Chicken oh. chippy salt. What's that? Uh, chicken flavoured salt. <laughs> salt of the gods. Salt of the gods. That is really good salt. This is an oat flatty, not a flat white. It's red Australia. Then before flying home, I met Matt again to go for some nice coffees and some local riding. I feel this.
we finished the ride at Chloe Matt's fiance's cafe, the Gator Club in Adelaide, which was absolutely lovely little gluten free and vegan cafe. This is the good spot. Look at these peanut butter bookies. Your mum home. How is she? And I had time for one more ice cream with Lisa before hopping on the plane. A final ice cream.